Good Welcome morning. Welcome to all of you on this beautiful rainy day. Isn't it wonderful to have the rain? I love it anyway. Maybe I won't say that after a deluge later today. <laughs> Whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you're visiting with us today, we invite you to fill out the card. Give us the information if it's your first time. Or if you want to put a prayer request, even though uh, you're not a visitor, just go ahead and put that in the offering plate and the counters will see that I get it. Welcome to those of you who are, who are on Zoom today. I want to invite you to keep yourself muted. Sally is our co-host today, and if you turn yourself on and want to jump up and down, she's going to mute you. <laughs> and for those in the congregation, please turn off your cell phones or silence them. But we want to clear our minds and our hearts for worship today. Uh, you will notice in your bulletin that you have an insert called Rooted in Love. And those of you who got the bulletin online, you did not have it, but you can get one if you call the office. We are starting our stewardship campaign today, a wonderful time of the year when you and I get to evaluate what is it that we're going to give to God for 2022. I suppose we have a lot of things to give to God. And this particular white insert has a little wrap on the back, consider your pledge as a percent of your monthly income. I love that. That's a really good help for me as I'm planning my budget. And we will have Mandy speak to us later and testify about giving. Our theme today is open our eyes, Lord. So don't close your eyes maybe today during the prelude. Sometimes I suggest you close your eyes and breathe deeply, but breathe deeply and look at the sacred space and hear the sacred sounds as Daryl and Janet played the prelude for us. It is, a one, it is wonderful to be worshiping with you. I invite you to stand if you'd like and join me in the responsive call to worship as I begin. It's based on our gospel lesson for today. Come, my friends, come to see what God will do this day. We come, we come longing, longing to have, have our eyes open to God's word. Come, beloved, come and see what God will do in our lives. We come expecting to be healed and filled with God's love. Come ready to be changed. Alleluia. Please join me in the unison prayer. All seeing God, God, open us to your love and compassion. Open our ears to hear you speaking to us. Give us words to speak that are tender and kind. We are ready to be changed by your light. Amen. Our hymn is Open Your Eyes, Lord, found in the insert.
let us come to a time of confession. God, so many times we close our eyes to the things we would rather not see. We spend time worrying. We turn away from those who need us. Forgive us and open our eyes so we can see those people who are in need exactly as you see them, as our brothers and sisters. Let us now be in silence. Amen. Friends, hear the assurance of God's grace. God has opened our eyes. Come and see what God is doing. Hallelujah. I invite you to stand if you like and sing, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. from Psalms 34, uh, verses 1 through 8, and then 19 through 22. I'm reading from the Pew Bible, which is the New Revised Version. It is from uh, David, and it is in praise for deliverance from trouble. Of David, when he feigned madness before Elbimelech, um, so that he drove him away, and, and he did go away. And I begin. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor soul cried and was, head, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The anthem this morning is Adigio, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Adagio. Adagio. And um, Janet's going to play it for us. Thank you, Janet. That was just prayerful. It was so wonderful. Our scripture reading continues from the Gospel of Mark today, chapter 10. They came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Barnabas, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. What does God see? I think in this story, God and Jesus saw the person. God sees our needs, our gifts, our bodies, all of us. There's not any part of us that God doesn't see. And what does God do when God looks at us? Well, taking the example from our story today, God heals, God loves, God teaches, God nurtures. I find it ironic in our story today that the people did not want blind Bartimaeus to be healed. They sternly ordered him to go away. Partly because in their day and time, they believed that blindness was caused by sin, either of the person or by the parents. And so he was delegated to a part in society where he was put away and he had to beg for food. They wanted to silence the voice of the person crying for help. But Jesus was not to be deterred. He said, bring him to me. And he healed him and blessed him. Your faith has made you well. I think that Jesus did more than heal blind Bartimaeus. He turned their understanding of blindness and poverty on its head. Even if people believe sin caused the blindness, Jesus reversed it. Didn't matter to him what caused the man's blindness. He healed him. And he blessed him. Your faith has made you well. The man was good. His faith was strong. And Jesus saw this. And the passage tells us that Bartimaeus followed him. So what was his response after being healed? He didn't go away thankless. He followed Jesus. 
Jesus sees us the same way, just as we are, but maybe deeper. You know, I've learned it's easy to put on a good front and act like everything's okay. And we have a society, and sometimes even in church, we don't really want to hear people's aches and pains and struggles. We like it when people tell us nice things or good stories. But to me, the church is the place where we can cry, where we can lay our wounds open before God and be heard. Jesus sees our joys and looks at us with love and heals us. Right now, we're burdened by pretty much. Almost every week, I talk to actually a number of people who are distraught, either by COVID, by economics, by family situations, by illness, by just the way the world feels to them right now. It doesn't feel very friendly. Everybody's angry, they say. What does God see? God sees the person, the whole person, and knows the whole needs. What might we learn from this? Perhaps that we too are to see people with the eyes of love. Recently, someone asked me, point blank, do you give money to beggars? The term kind of shocked me a minute because I'm not used to the term beggars. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, you know the homeless people who are all around. Do you give money? What do you do? I said, every single time I have cash in my hand, I give it to them. Well, aren't you enabling them for their situation? And I said, that is not for me to judge. And I was stunned by the word beggars. And I said to her, she said, well, why would you do that? I said, because that's my brother and my sister. That is my brother sitting outside of Starbucks every single day hoping to get a cup of coffee or a meal. That's my sister at the Burger King who's always there with a couple children and straggly hair putting out their hands. That's my brother who sits in the, at the stoplight with the sign, homeless, no work, lost everything. That's our brother. That's our brother and our sister. And I think that's how God sees us. God sees us with the eyes of love and mercy and tenderness. If only we could do the same thing. We would not judge where that money is going. I mean, it's not like I'm passing out 100 bucks. If I had, I probably would. But seeing them with the eyes of love. And you never know, you never know when that little help you give might just be the impetus to bring that person up and start them on a new path. You never know. This happened to me when I've been down in the pits and somebody just made a wonderful comment. You're loved. I love you. I care about you. And just like that, my day turned around. Let us be like Jesus. You know, he didn't even take credit for the healing. He said to the man, your faith has made you well. He didn't take credit. He healed the man and made a difference in his life forever. The joy for us today, the good news for us today, is that Jesus and God see us exactly as we are and love us anyway. And the challenge is for us to do the same for others. I'm going to show a video now of a young man singing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. So it will take a moment to get the uh, lights adjusted and get it turned on. And just meditate as you hear this. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Christopher Duffley was born in May of 2001. He's actually the son of my youngest brother and his girlfriend. And when I received the phone call from my brother, I found out that he was born at only 26 weeks, one pound, 12 ounces. So he was very premature and he was in critical condition. And there were several nights that we were told that Christopher wouldn't make it through the night. And at that point, I prayed for Christopher. And I just asked God to be with my brother and to do what his will would be. And for a long time, I had no contact with my brother. I really didn't know what happened to Christopher. And all of a sudden, my heart was moved. Where was my nephew? What happened to him? 
and on my first phone call to social services, the gentleman knew about Christopher and he indeed was in foster care. He was totally blind. He had been born with cocaine in his system and he had a host of other medical issues. My first response to that, or my first feeling to that, was fear. I prayed very intently and I really, I begged the Lord, I said, could you just show me, show me what you would want? And he did, he answered in my heart. He told me, do not be afraid that I will take care of everything. We've had challenges and we've had joys. And one of the greatest joys was to hear Christopher make noise, sing, and keep beat. He really didn't talk till about first grade. So when he sang, it was really neat. And it wasn't shortly around that time that we found out that Christopher had perfect pitch. And he started to do remarkable things. And what a joy and what a prophecy that God gave us that these tears would come and they come out of great joy. And when Christopher sings, open the eyes of my heart, he teaches us to not see everything by our eyes, but to see things the way God sees things.
Amen. Let us come to a time of prayer. Holy One, we want to see you. Especially now when things seem so dark in our world, we want your light in our lives. We want you to heal us, comfort us, give us grace. And God, we want to see others as you see them, as brothers and sisters, as people in need. We thank you for this young man and that this family took him in when things were tough. We long to see your light when our families are upset. We long to have pleasant discussions with those with whom we disagree. We want our eyes open to possibilities for people crossing our borders seeking refuge. We want to see everyone fed and housed. But God, we've lost our way. So open us to new possibilities let us hear one another and come up with good ideas. You've given us great wisdom. Let us use it for good. We pray especially for those in our community here who are suffering, Fred and Shirley, Mary, Hillary, Katie. We pray for Monica and her family at the sudden death of her husband. We pray for the Lucchetti family and the Bissell family, on the recent deaths in their families. We grieve with them. Let us see them, hear them, and give them comfort. Today, we come because we want to hear your good news, that you see us and you will heal us, and we thank you for that. We pray, too, for our world leaders, God, open their eyes. Close their eyes to greed and let them be compassionate and tender. Let them not be so stubborn and powerful, but become meek and lowly as you want us to be. It seems like it might take a miracle, but we're calling on you for that. Our faith will make them well. We pray for our children and our teachers Help us to show them a way of living that's nonviolent, that's open, that's accepting. And may they rise up to be loving and kind to one another. We thank you for this parish today as we start our stewardship campaign. What an opportunity we have. We love the ministry that's happening here. We are thriving. And so we ask your continued grace and mercy as we move forward. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for Jesus who shows us the way. And I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with me as it's found on page four in your book, or two on the bulletin. Our loving God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we'll now hear from Mandy. I'm here today to explain why I am committed to supporting this church with my prayers, my participation, and in worship and leadership, as well as financially. Not only did I vow to do so when I joined the church, but I found a family here, a purpose, and a way to share the blessings that God had given me. All those discoveries were influenced by different individuals in our congregation but none more than Pastor Bonnie. She wouldn't take credit for that, but she is. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so some of us have planned a special thank you. 
and recognition of the woman who means so much to all of us. Thank you for indulging us for a few more minutes. Some of us got together to present you with a token of our appreciation and say what we know the entire congregation is thinking of you. Okay, guys, come, come, come. You are appreciated and loved. For the last eight years, you have served this church not only as a spiritual leader, children, don't go too close, <laughs> but as our administrator, our confidant, protector, friend, cheerleader, and comforter. Your leadership has ignited our wonder and spurred our commitment to being the church in our personal lives and the community. Your perennial optimism in all circumstances <laughs> lifts the spirits of us all. When you were called to be pastor and serve this church, we never imagined you could exceed all the expectations by such a huge margin. You consistently work more hours than required, often miss your contracted days off. You not only brought children and families to us, but established a thriving network of young families that support each other in church and out. You are a constant guide, reminding us to treat each other as Christ would, to be loving and kind to one another and those to whom we disagree. <laughs> you constantly challenge us to be better without the least bit of condemnation, even when we fall short. You are the cohesiveness that holds us all together and makes everyone feel important. You are almost always available to those with needs, physically or emotionally, often at the risk of your own health. You brought us into the 21st century with your technical skills and prowess. Now we can serve and witness to more than those who sit within this sanctuary on any given Sunday. Even while you took a few months off to deal with the cancers that rocked both yours and Dr. Darrell's world, you were there for us, praying for us, easing our distress about your illness through Caring Bridge, and reassuring us you would be back. Now here you are, still coping and undergoing treatment, but all as if you had simply been away on sabbatical. You are our rock our treasured gift from God. May you be blessed in all things, always. We love you. Okay, that's my stewardship moment. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that shocked me. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, these are my favorite flowers in all the world. So I appreciate that. So you have to call us to the offering, though. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> when you change the routine, you know, it all goes away. So, okay, now it's time for all of us to give. Sometimes our gifts are used for heating and salaries. Other times we are used for rental assistance and food on Sunday school materials. All our precious ways we contribute to our ministry here. Give with joy. Today, again, because we are being diligent about our safety during COVID, we are not collecting offerings in the pews. You may place your offerings in the collection plate here in front, on your way out, uh, at the entrance to the sanctuary, or in the social hall by the exit door. Your gifts are a blessing. Please stand if you'd like and let us dedicate our gifts in the unison prayer. Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer today, our checks and cash, our faltering steps, our brokenness, our leftovers, our hopes, our risking, our lives. Bless and transform all that we offer and all that we hold back, and that new life may be ours to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. And now the hymn. Be now my vision on page 451.
before the benediction, I want to give a few announcements. Uh, this morning, we have your quarterly uh, contribution statements and also a stewardship letter ready for you from the stewardship team. So please pick those up as you exit the uh, sanctuary today. And uh, Pastor Relations is meeting tomorrow. We are meeting in person at 3 o'clock in the Eastman building. Uh, masks are required. So this was such a surprise by me to say something, but uh, I have been so happy to be back at work. I just can't hardly believe it. And every time I go to Stanford, they say, so do you have a good support system? And I say, oh yeah, I got a whole bunch of them. And um, it's just been, you all have walked with me and with Daryl on the, on the journey of cancer and just so many things. You kept the church going. And we are really thriving. We're having new people join us. We're supporting families. We're supporting people who are hungry. And many of you are working in the community and doing things in the community that we never even get to hear about. Um, people are helping in the office. I mean, it's just wonderful. So I'm privileged to be your pastor. I'm honored. I cannot thank you enough for this. This is just a true joy. But every day, I'm thrilled to wake up and be able to serve God this way. It's a dream come true for me. So thank you so very much. Hear now the benediction. May you go out this week and have your eyes open to possibilities, to people to love, and in the process, may you be healed and know that God loves you. Amen. So we'll sing our, stand and sing our benediction song, and then I'll invite you to see, be seated for the postlude. So we'll invite you to stand right now.